Uh, welcome to another edition of CEO Storytime. So my friend was in her car the other day, and she was stopped at a stoplight. And this vagrant passed by her car and kind of looked at her and started to speak to her through the window. And, uh, you know, she didn't roll down the window for about 30, 45 seconds. But finally, uh, he became so persistent that she felt like she had to roll down the window. And when she did, the gentleman yelled, hey, your tire's low. <laughs> what are the chances, right? <laughs> Hey, podcast listener, even if you are alone in your entrepreneurial pursuit, know that today, right now in your earbuds, you are joined by thousands of entrepreneurs all around the globe seeking to do the same thing you are. If you want to know more about this program or this podcast or want to get barraged by a lot of annoying pop-ups, check out our website, lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Yeah, buddy, it's Thursday. That means it's time for another Lifestyle Business Podcast, where we believe building a business is the ideal way to create more freedom and opportunity for you, your family, and those around you. Of course, those around me is my captain, my co-host, a man who we ironically call the CEO. I don't think you can be the CEO of a company without a board that has 10 employees. I just want to make that clear to everybody. A man whose Facebook updates are live streamed at the FBI HQ. What's up, Vagrant? How you doing? Man, you just took my title away from me. That was like my only thing I had. <laughs> the CEO, yeah. If you guys stick around to the end of the show, we'll share with you one way to make clear and affordable phone calls from anywhere on the planet. And I actually did it from a deserted tropical beach. So it works. Let's get on to the shouts and the news. This is the anti entrepreneur podcast, five stars. Thank you, sir. We've got an iTunes review, Ian, that says, We are no fluff, actionable advice. Great show. Sonic-centric, I think the user was. And one more iTunes review, five stars. Stoic Nutrition says you guys are like older, more successful versions of me. Yeah, well, there's time for you to screw up like us. Don't worry. (laughs) You've got time. (laughs) Got a couple news items, tons of comments on our 100th episode. Thank you so much for supporting the LBP. Some really A great show of support. Um, You know, there's a lot of things you can do at lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Probably the primary thing is sign up for our mailing list, uh, and thereafter, immediately, you'll be sent a download link to our first 50 episodes where you can hear younger uh, versions of ourselves. Younger? Yeah. Maybe stupider? Hope drunker. More drunk, more stupid, hopefully. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to Saigon on May 12th. Um, many of the podcast listeners might know that I actually lived in Saigon. Saigon was ground zero for my expat adventure. And uh, there's a lot of DCers in Saigon right now, plus some old friends. Um, plus, for those of you who don't know, one of the greatest cafe cultures in the world. And uh, I think better than Paris. And so I'm pumped up to go to Saigon. And uh, there's actually a lot of opportunities in Saigon. So Yeah. Uh, somebody in the D.C. the other day posted a picture of uh, a cafe, and I thought, that is Paris. But no, it was Saigon. And he took a picture, I think, of his apartment, too, and it looks super pimp. But uh, you just announced to me two minutes ago that you're going to Saigon, so uh, that's pretty cool. I would have <laughs> caught it on the credit card statement. Though. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but, uh, it was actually that thread in the D.C. that inspired me. You know, I'm thinking, what's the point of being location independent if we can't go around and, and have a little bit of fun and do a little bit of business? So actually, Saigon isn't completely irrelevant for my entrepreneurial brethren out there. Uh, it's actually a, uh, a, an emerging manufacturing base. And, uh, you know, we're having a couple issues with some of our Chinese suppliers, so we're going to talk to some factory contacts that we have in Saigon about maybe manufacturing some of our products. Um, there's a lot of startups going on in Saigon, too, so I want to get uh, talk to some of the people in the startup scene. And, uh, you know, also I just think there's something about um, Vietnam that there's a, there's a very American presence there um, relative to China. Because, you know, what yep. Vietnam essentially is trying to do is resist Chinese influence. And one of the ways in which they've done that strategically is align themselves with America. And and so when you go to Saigon, like you, you meet a lot of young professionals from America, like working at banks, 
Um, there's a lot of guys that are uh, overseas Vietnamese who are coming back um, to Vietnam to set up startup funds and to do cool new businesses. And so it's an exciting scene. And uh, aside from all this other stuff, it really is the best eating in the world. So I am just going to have my face in food for, for seven straight days. So do check out the credit card statement, sir. I'm, I'm planning on making some hits to that. In the D.C., we had a Berlin meetup last week. The pictures are absolutely inspiring. It's so cool to see people self-organizing. I, I think the D.C. is probably more vibrant now than it's ever been. Uh, you're doing yeah. your uh, product design mastermind call tomorrow. I did my uh, writer's mastermind call yesterday. Absolutely inspiring stuff. It was super cool, man, to see the pictures over there. I guess everybody met up in like an art studio, and it's exactly what you do expect for Berlin, like these tall uh, windows, light shining through. You're in the artist district, all these people meeting up, iPads all over the place. It was really, really cool to see that happen. So cool. Shout to Chris Dietrich for setting the thing up, to Simon Payne for just being the mensch that he is, to Mars Dorian for offering the space for DCers to get together inspiring stuff. You've got a new piece of cat furniture coming out. Uh, you know, if you guys want to check out our, our cat furniture, check out the blog at Lifestyle Business Podcast. We've long talked about with our cat furniture business that we're, we're sort of a great product away from making yep. some major progress. I just think, you know, we got some decent marketing, we got some decent products, but we don't really have something that just nailed it and you think you might have come up with something so what's the story oh i didn't come up with anything geez i don't design anything anymore i'm not even sure what i do you check the credit but, card statement that's what you yeah, do exactly. <laughs> by the way if that you spend your time you're screwed um yeah so uh we got some really talented designers that do, do this stuff for us now and so he came up with a super cool idea that i think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be hit for us. So it's always really hard. And this is something we're going to talk about tomorrow in the product mastermind. It's really, really hard to find the apex of uh, what the market wants, what you can produce in like the cost. I mean, yeah. there's this intersection where everything kind of has to perfectly align and for it to be hit. And so far we've done okay, just like some selling products on our sites, uh, some through like third party, um, third parties and things like that. But it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, to uh, achieve a slam dunk, but that's what we're going for with this new product. Yeah, we call it price benefit nexus or price value nexus. It's tough to find and, and in these industries that have slower moving distribution parts. Like, let's say this product is everything that we think it's going to be. And maybe it's even a product that, you know, a big pet chain would want to pick up. Well, it's probably another two or three years until you know, that gets legible to them until it gets translated yeah. into their EDI system and onto their shelves and all that crap. So, I mean, that's one of the things that we love about internet-based businesses is that, man, you just come up with an idea and you put it out there and, and you could have your inventory overnight, potentially. Um, let me give a quick shout to, to Dr. Bruce from the Spears School of Business. I heard a rumor that uh, Dr. Bruce... Uh, recommends podcasts to his MBA students, and he recommended the LBP. That's a humbling uh, recommendation. So thanks, uh, Bruce and class, for checking out the LBP when you got some spare time from your studies. Uh, that's really humbling. And speaking of humbling, flickerofgenius.com recently did a list of the top six podcasts in the known human universe, and the LBP is number one. What? We finally made it to number one? Finally made it to number one, man. It's been two long years. Wow. And finally, somebody is ill-informed enough to put us at the top of the list. Um, do we have anything else to share? One more quick piece of news is uh, let's talk about passion and, 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 and life goals a little bit. One of our life goals is to become angel investors. And I don't know. This is sort of like... It's like every entrepreneur wants to be an angel investor. And I think we're kind of finally getting to the point where we could seed companies in a way that's meaningful. Um, yeah. We're already starting to do that with our time investment here in the Philippines. That's correct. Coming up soon. And so what we're trying to do is develop a fund so that, say, if, if – if the people that come to the startup summer, one, one, one business really stands up above the crowd, but maybe it needs 50 grand or maybe it needs 100 grand to really get moving. And uh, we'd like to be able to supply that. And so what, what we've been kicking around is these ideas of how do you start a fund? How do you be effective as an as a, as a angel investor? 
and how do you get deal flow going? So I just put that out there to the audience. Um, we talked about it a little bit in the DC this week, kind of got beat up for some maybe naive ideas I had about how to do this. But one thing I really want to do here at the podcast and in general is, you know, our mission, Ian, is to put 1,000 people into great businesses this year. And I think one of the ways we can do that is we can put our money where our mouths are and we can actually start to make investments. And For so, sure. And so hopefully within the next week or two, we can develop a system, sort of like an accelerator system that we can put on our blog and then entrepreneurs that listen to the show can apply for funding. And then we can start to get some deal flow going because, I mean, obviously from our angle, we're going to have to look at hundreds of opportunities before we make an investment. Um, yeah. Ho- I don't know. That's my guess. And so what I, well, want, what I want to do is start to grease these wheels, you know, start to get people thinking about Dan and Ian are guys who do investments. And uh, so that's I'm thinking creatively this week about how to do that. Yeah, this is totally new for us. So uh, this is this is all just kind of uh, heading in the clouds, right? Right now, until we get a little bit more information, we start to pull together exactly how this is going to work out. But I think the start of this is Tropical MBA Summer. Yeah. And I think an extension of that is actually uh, handing some money out yeah. and hopefully being involved in some pretty cool companies that we believe are the future of whatever. Well, yeah, and it might even make sense for us to have an angel investor here on the show that embodies some of our ideals. So if anybody knows anybody like that, do hit us up. Our emails are Dan and Ian at Lifestyle Business Podcast. I think they work now because our Google Apps account is running smooth. Loving the Google Apps Thank account. you, David. Speaking of interviews, we've got a great one today. Matt Paulson took time out of his schedule to join us on the LPP. He's been a longtime supporter of the show. And he has an extraordinarily clever business. He does niche sites, but in a clever, leveraged, and unique way. And meanwhile, while everybody is saying the sky is falling with niche sites and AdSense and this and that, meanwhile, Matthew Paulson is quietly crushing it. And in this episode, he's going to share some unorthodox tactics for doing so. All right, we got Matt from Matt paulson.com thanks for joining us matt how did you find the lifestyle business podcast yeah that's a good question i think i've heard it from on startups for the rest of us way back in the day and i've been listening since maybe episode 25 and listened to all of them by now but it's you know been a while well i appreciate your support we've been probably sent a lot of emails one time the lbp went down on its knees and you came in like a knight in shining armor to help us uh, defend against robots or hacker terrorists or something. So uh, yep. I appreciate all of your support. I'm really fascinated by your business. You do content marketing, but in such an unorthodox way. So we're going to point listeners first to one of your websites that we're going to sort of use as a little bit of a illustration of some of these concepts. It's called AmericanBankingNews.com. And uh, so the primary, the first thing we're going to talk about today is four outside of the index indexes. These are places that you're getting traffic that's paying off huge that isn't the standard Google SERP. So let's talk about your top four outside of the index index, starting with video. How does it work? How can we get traffic that way? Sure. Well, there are probably three big video indexes. The first is obviously YouTube. You know, after Google, it's either the second or third largest index. You know, there's also Google Video and then Bing slash Yahoo Video. So if you have video content on your website and you submit a video of sitemap to Google and Bing, you know, you'll show up in their video search and it's, you know, you can rank pretty well in Google without, you know, doing the same ton of SEO. So if you can do an article with content and do a video for it and, you know, set up the right video sitemap, you can get some additional eyeballs without you know having to be you know great at SEO. So when I go into your each each post on American Banking News, I'm seeing a video at the top of every post. Yep. But those aren't uploaded to YouTube, are they? So what's the video no. strategy there? No, those aren't for YouTube. Those are licensed videos from a company that I work with and they provide me their videos. I post them to the website and then I provide Google and Bing a video site map. And then those get indexed and, you know, I get traffic from those two search engines. So we've got a note here about your site, uh, videocounty.com. What does that do? Um, Same idea. Um, I started, you know, doing the video thing on AmericanBankingNews.com. So I thought I would try to, you know, have a site that's dedicated to video and use their entire library to 
you know, see if I get more traffic and revenue that way. And how's it working? Um, I got it in Google Video. I'm getting three, four hundred page views a day from that. Um, I've been working with the guys at Bing, and they said it should be in pretty soon, but they always seem to take longer than they say they will. So wow. maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll get into it. But the nice thing about the Bing guys is you can actually email them back and forth, and they will <laughs> respond to you on like some other search engines. You know, what I love about your approach in general is I feel like people are just trying to bench press these content businesses to get traffic. You know, getting 400 people to your site is no small feat. And I feel like what you're really adept at is identifying levers and places where, because you're just one guy in the middle of this uh, incredible network, moving lots of traffic and money around. I absolutely love it. The number two high leverage outside the index index you're saying is Google Images. Really? Is it just a matter of optimizing my image tags? How do you do this? Okay, so one of my one of my websites, I you know write about companies a lot, and I about a year ago I started adding you know the company's logos to it, and you know I after a while I kind of noticed I was getting a lot of traffic from you know Google Image Search, so you know I kind of ramped that up. So now I have about two thousand images on you know one of my sites, and I, I get anywhere from two thousand to twenty five hundred you know kind of referrals a day from Google Image Search. And the thing about that is, you know, it, it doesn't send, the traffic that you get doesn't convert as well in terms of people clicking on ads and buying stuff, but it's such easy traffic that it's worth doing, you know, if you have any kind of content site that's out there. So if you do an image sitemap and if you, um, you know, use alt tags and title tags right, you can, and you know, do pretty well with that. The number three index you're talking about is Bing and Google News. You're talking about thousands of visitors a day. Tell me how to do this. I've never even heard of these search engines. Okay, so new search engines have some pretty special requirements to get in. Obviously, you need to be a news website. Um, they're not, not too easy to get into, but if you can get into it, it's worth it. Um, one of the big things is that you need to have like a writing staff. It can't just be you writing about stuff. You need to have three or four people writing on the site, um, you need to be putting content up on a regular basis. You know, it can't be crap, it can't be spun content, it's got to be original, it's got to be, have some analysis to it. And your site that can't be brand new, you have to have been doing it for three or four, four months before you know, even think about submitting to any of those engines, but you know, if you can, you can get into those, you can do pretty well. I love this, so a little bit of elbow grease up front and you're not competing with the entire world. And the news results, no. those are the ones that come up, you know, sort of like breaking at the top of the SERP. Correct? Yep. So if you can, yeah. So if you can write an article about Facebook and get up to the top, you, you know, you don't always get indexed, or you'll get indexed, but it won't always show up there. But if you do, and your article gets featured in Google News, you can get, say, four or 5,000 page views on just, you know, one article in a period of a few days. Absolutely brilliant. Number four, you're talking about Google Finance. Is this similar to the news engine? How does this work? Yep. So a prerequisite to getting into Google Finance is being in Google News, and the prerequisite for Bing Finance is Bing News. But you know, a, a surprising number of people, you know, look at those pages for their stocks. So if you know you write about Google and you can do the right SEO to get into Google Finance, and you're in Google News, and you'll show up in like the list of stories in the top right, and you can get you know a pile of traffic. If you write about you know stocks, a lot of people are interested in like Apple and Netflix and you know Google and, and some of those. Absolutely love this because I mean I, I know a lot of the listeners are just getting beat up by Google right now, and the yes. problem is is they're just they're just competing with everybody. They've got no edge, and by doing a little bit of work up front, you're competing against you're getting premium placement with less competitors. So this is super clever stuff. Certainly, I think it's. I think you know the you know the niche site market is flooded. There's no barrier to entry into any of it, and there's just too many com people competing for the same keywords and kind of a, a limited space. So if you can change the game and you know be swimming in a different pool than everybody is, and you know there's some more opportunity that not everybody has. Well, let's talk about exactly that, Matt. Before I let you go, I want to break down your strategy and see, help people to visualize how they might employ it. Um, in particular, the strategies and the indexes we've brought up today, obviously there's a bunch of others, but we're talking about things that are more sort of timely, topical, news-oriented. So let's say somebody wants to start a sports website. There's a few strategies that I'm pulling out from what you're doing. You're scraping content. 
um, your licensing content, which I think is fabulous. So like, let's first, let's start with the licensing content thing. Explain the general thinking behind licensed content. A lot of people I know that are content marketers have never even set, mentioned the idea of licensed content. Sure. So there are a bunch of companies that are out there that will license you content to use on your websites. Um, you know, certainly there are companies that would license you sports content. Um, I can think of a couple off the top of my head, but um, you could put that on a website and try to get that into a new search engine. And if you could do that, and I'm not sure you can with licensed content up front, but if you get some writers to uh, you know write in your site, you might be able to add some of the licensed content later and not get into too much trouble. So basically what you're doing is you're finding a way to piece together traffic generating content as cheaply as possible. So you're using licensing, using some scraping, and how much overseas labor are you utilizing to do this kind of stuff? <sighs> Um, I have, I think, six or seven writers on right now. Some of them are U.S.-based, and some of them are in random places like Romania. So, um, you know, it's they have to be able to write, you know, pretty well. But, uh, you know, the cost per article ranges between, say, you know, three or four bucks an article up to ten bucks an article, depending on the quality, um, you know, you want and where the person's from and how good their English is. But, you know, up front, you know, I'm willing to pay more just because, you know, to have that quality to get into some of those harder to get into indexes is worth it. So there's some upfront investment, but down the line, you can, you know, add in some of those more affordable writers. I, I saw, I know a lot of your business is sort of timing oriented. Like you also have a newsletter that comes out a little earlier in the day for investors. If it's yep. a paid version, I think that's really cool. I, I don't know. There's this concept that uh, Seth Godin has been talking about called Twitch, which is like, uh, you know, these there's a whole new market value which is emerging, which is like super high-paced, fast information. And I see what you're doing is a little bit of an unorthodox approach, providing faster information in these news and finance update indexes, rather than what everybody's preaching right now, which is pour your soul and $500 worth of your energy into one article, and then pray to God that people retweet it. <laughs> yeah, I I just haven't had good luck with the you know using social media to promote articles and. Some people do, but it's, that's not my game. So, Matt, what is the best place for listeners to get in touch with you if they've got any questions about the types of businesses you are running? So, my website is mattpaulson.com. It's P A U L S O N. So, mattpaulson.com. And then my email is just matt at mattpaulson.com. All right. Cheers. Hi, Matt, thanks so much for joining us and for being a great supporter of the LBP. You're always welcome back on the show. Let's get moving on to the quick tips, tricks. And or Ian's got a couple funny jokes section, but he's not going to tell it to you because they're way no. too evil, man. They're way too evil. We can't even say that stuff on Tropical Talk Radio. I want to tell you guys about a service called Not VoIP. It's actually my buddy Vlad um, pulled together a callback service. It's got a great Android and iPhone app. Um, basically, the service allows you to use your local handset to call anywhere in the world, and it uses callback technology which I'm not even going to bother to explain, but the way it works, or the, the result for the entrepreneur, is that when Skype sucks for you, you can call anyway. You don't need Wi-Fi. And, right. and you know, we long talked about this idea that Skype sort of enabled what we can do. Um, but, you know, what if you're in a situation like right now in our house here in Bali, Ian, sometimes the internet goes down. And Sometimes. Okay, so the, the, even this call has been kind of crappy. So now... What if, what if we, we are going to cut a deal with PetSmart? Um, I can't call them on this Wi-Fi line, but you could call them through not VoIP. And the rates are much better because it's a callback service than getting an international phone plan. So it's kind of yeah. like a service that's in between Skype and international phone plans. So if not VoIP would have existed four years ago when we started this business, it's possible we could have built the business overseas. Because, I mean, that's one thing that's like part of our story is that we did a lot of the building in California because we need, mm -hmm. the phone was so important. But with not VoIP, you could potentially say, you know what, I'm going to chuck like three or 400 bucks a month at not VoIP. Whereas back four years ago, using an international phone plan, that could easily be like 2000 3000 You can't bootstrap on that kind of budget. But you can bootstrap on three to 400 bucks a month. So you could say, look, I'm going to get three phone numbers inbound. I'm going to forward them down the chain, just like we do with Grasshopper right now back in California, and I'm going right. to use not VoIP to grow my business. So it's a very niche product, but potentially amazing 
for a small group of entrepreneurs. And I know a group of entrepreneurs who's using it, and I use it when I go to the Philippines. And we're going to outfit everybody down in Puerto Galera with a not VoIP account. Um, because, again, if you want to make a cold call, you can't count on that Skype connection. You need clarity, and you can get it with not VoIP. So thanks, Vlad, for put, putting that together. You've got one quick tip before we get off and running. What is it? Speaking of apps, Vlad's got an app for uh, his not VoIP, so definitely check that out. It's a pretty good-looking app. I saw it. Yeah. Um, but I got a new app for you. New app to me, old everybody else draw something this is what all the kids are doing have you seen this yet you probably haven't seen this you don't play kids games i've been hustling but, uh, day, man <laughs> oh man i'm just over here drawing i gotta get like a stylus now uh, it's incredible so what you do is basically i think it's like pictionary the equivalent of pictionary or something you draw a picture and then you send it to your friend and then your friend has to guess what it is and then you go back and forth like 20 times um so it's awesome it's totally awesome i'm addicted to it i got like 10 friends on there that's like pretty much all my friends are on there so well it's clear evidence that the listeners are listening to our podcast that they are just seeking out more worthless things to do with their time so thank you ceo yeah for delivering the goods yet again it's another great thursday thanks for hey doing buddy what, what? There's a couple minutes of the day where I can't be working. I'm not going to describe to you exactly where I am during those minutes, but i got to do something else. i got to go. Thank you for joining us, Ian. I'll see you next Thursday. Booyah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Don't be shy. We've got a mailing list, lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Go there, get yourself signed up, and we'll keep you up to date on everything.